Do you like holidays? Yes, we all do. Holidays are special days, aren't they? Where people stop to celebrate or remember something or someone special. Some holidays are religious holidays. Maybe you and your family go to a church, synagogue, or other house of worship on such a day. Other holidays help us remember famous people. Do you know who this is? <laughs> That's right. It's George Washington, the first president of the United States. Americans celebrate George Washington's birthday every year during the month of February. Still other holidays recall important events. This is a picture of the people who signed America's Declaration of Independence way back in the year 1776. We remember that famous day, Independence Day, every July 4th, when people often gather for picnics and firework displays. July 4th is a national holiday. It's celebrated by people all over the country, but states have holidays too. The state of Texas, highlighted on this map, has a long and exciting history. Have you heard of San Jacinto Day? Or maybe of the Battle of San Jacinto? Perhaps you and your family have visited the tall San Jacinto Monument near the city of Houston. But do you know the story behind San Jacinto? To tell this story, we have to go way, way back. Back to a time long before the First World War. Back to a time before the first big oil discoveries in Texas. And back before the time of the cowboys who drove the Texas Longhorns north on the great cattle drives. In fact, we have to go back over 150 years. In those days, very few people lived in Texas. Texas wasn't even a part of the United States yet. No, in those days, Texas was ruled by the country of Mexico. This flag, shown over the map, is the Mexican flag, which then flew over Texas. At about this time, though, more settlers from the United States began to come to Texas. One of the early American settlers was Jane Long, who, along with a black slave named Kiamata, was for a brief time in charge of a small colony. Another very important early settler was Stephen F. Austin. Have you heard the name Austin before? Yes, Austin is the name of the capital city of Texas, isn't it? And the city is named after Stephen F. Austin, who is often called the father of Texas. In this very old picture, Austin is shown helping settlers as they receive deeds to land in Texas. New settlements began to grow, but soon the new settlers, as well as many Mexican people who were also living in Texas at the time, had difficulties with the Mexican government. Some of these people wanted to form their own country, while others hoped to separate from Mexico and join the United States. This led, in 1836, to the struggle called the Texas Revolution. The people of Texas took up arms against Mexico. One of the great battles of this war was fought at an old mission called the Alamo. This is a picture of the Alamo as it is today in the city of San Antonio. It was here at the Alamo that over 180 Texans held off the much larger Mexican army before the Mexicans overran the defenders and killed them all. The wife of one of the defenders, Susanna Dickinson, survived to tell the terrible story to the world. But the Texans continued to fight on. Their army consisted of people from many different groups. Juan Seguin was one of many Mexican Texans who fought for Texas independence. Samuel McCullough was a black soldier who also fought for Texas freedom. Erastus Deaf Smith was another Texas soldier. Smith, a brave scout for the Texas Army, is an example of a handicapped person who helps his country. But perhaps the most famous Texan at this time was Sam Houston. Houston was the general of the Texas Army. Although many Texans were frightened by the defeat at the Alamo, Houston rallied his troops and drew up a plan. 
he led his men eastward from the town of Gonzales. To many people, this looked like nothing more than a retreat. But Houston actually used the time to resupply and organize his army. Meanwhile, the Mexican army followed in close pursuit. The Mexicans were led by General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. Santa Ana was certain that his well-dressed troops would defeat the more raggedly outfitted Texans. At last, Houston brought his army of slightly more than 900 soldiers to the plains of San Jacinto, near the present-day city of Houston. Here on the afternoon of April 21st, 1836, the Texans attacked, shouting, Remember the Alamo! And playing on drums and fifes the song, Will You Come to the Bower? The Texans surprised the Mexican army, which numbered around 1,200 men, and forced a panicky retreat. Strange as it may seem, the battle lasted only 18 minutes, but many Mexican soldiers were killed, and others were captured, including General Santa Ana himself. At the same time, only nine Texas soldiers died in the entire battle. Texas had won the war. The story of San Jacinto, however, does not end there. Although Texas went on to become an independent country, and later a state of the United States, the people of Texas never forgot that special day. As early as 1856, a small monument was erected at the graves of those who had fallen in the battle. Then, 100 years after the battle, in 1936, Texas planned a big celebration. The celebration was called the Texas Centennial. It marked the 100th anniversary of the independence of Texas. Even the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, came to Texas to help the people celebrate. The citizens of Dallas built the state fairgrounds to honor the event. But other people thought there should be something special to help people remember San Jacinto. Therefore, a large monument, the San Jacinto Monument, was started on April 21st, 1936. It was built on the site where the famous battle had taken place and finished in 1939. The completed monument is 570 feet from ground level to the top. It has a Texas History Museum at the bottom and an observation tower near the top. From here, people can gaze out over the battlefield and remember how Texas won its independence. And look at the very top of the monument. Yes, it's the Lone Star of Texas, over 30 feet tall and visible from every direction. Texas celebrated in a big way again in 1986. This was the Texas sesquicentennial, the 150th anniversary of independence. Once again, Texans watched parades, waved flags, reenacted some of the great battles of their history, and lit off fireworks in holiday fashion. But they always remembered the events behind the celebration itself. They remembered the Battle of San Jacinto. And they remembered the people who fought there, who helped Texas win its freedom to become the Texas we know today. <laughs>